This is the study system I used to go from having no knowledge of AWS to passing four certifications, all while balancing my full-time job as an AWS DevOps engineer. Throughout the years, I've tried lots of different techniques and resources. And after a lot of trial and error, I've used that experience to create this simple study system. This is what I wish I did when I first started studying for AWS exams as a beginner to cloud. But what if I told you there's small, simple things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life to achieve even better results? More about this at the end of the video. But first, I know what you might be thinking. Surely if you spend more time studying, then you'll get better results. But that's not always the case and could be doing more harm than good. A lot of the advice on YouTube now seems to be around studying for long periods of time. When I started learning AWS, I did the same. I tried to cram in long study sessions every day on top of my full-time job. This was a huge mistake. I felt drained, burned out, and noticed that I didn't retain much of what I learned. This ended up not being an effective use of my time. So instead of blocking out long periods of study, I'd recommend focusing on shorter, regular sessions with a clear purpose behind each one. But what should you do in those sessions? Well, this is where the three-part study system comes in. Step one, learn it. I've tried watching Udemy courses, reading documentation, YouTube videos, and external instructors like A Cloud Guru. It can be easy to get analysis paralysis in terms of what resources to actually use. In my experience, there's two paths that stand out. To illustrate, imagine two students, Adam and Bob. Now, Adam's been set a deadline by his manager to get an AWS certification within two weeks. His goal is to just pass the certification as soon as possible. So he's looking for something clear and concise, designed in such a way to cover just enough to pass the exam, but may lack a bit of depth. In this case, I would recommend getting a subscription to A Cloud Guru and going through their exam courses. Bob, on the other hand, has a lot of time to pass the exam. His priority is learning the theory and learning how to apply it to his job, even if this means it will take longer before he actually gets to sit the exam. In this case, I would recommend watching Adrian Cantrell's Technical Fundamentals playlist on YouTube. If his style of teaching resonates with you, I will then buy his relevant exam course. But whichever path you decide to go down, make sure you implement effective note-taking. Taking notes for technical things is hard. Now, I used to be that person scribbling away and noting down things as the video played, ending up with long, long pages of notes. They looked pretty sure, but they were a pain to review. I noticed that I wasn't actively learning and really engaging with the content. This all changed when I took a different approach. Instead of constantly taking notes, I went through part of the course without writing anything. I focused completely on the content and only when I understood something, like really understood it, I'd note it down. I really like this quote from Cajun Koi Academy on YouTube. The only way you're gonna learn is by struggling with the info in your brain. AWS is hard, and you should expect to struggle with truly understanding the concepts before writing notes. Now, a good way to make sure you're doing this is by using the Feynman technique. After you've learned a topic, try and make notes as if you're explaining the concept to a 12 year old. Don't use any jargon or complex terms unless you can clearly explain those too. Now, when I first started doing this, I was honestly a bit shocked at what it revealed. I think I had convinced myself that just by watching a course or reading an article that I really understood the topic. But I found that when I couldn't rely on the crutches of using technical jargon and had to really break down each topic, I realized there were lots of gaps in my understanding. And this is a great thing. It highlights exactly where you need to do a bit more research. When you're reading back your notes, you'll fully understand what's going on because you wrote it in your own words in the simplest way possible. For me, I like drawing out diagrams to visualize how different services interact. Other people I know really like using analogies. Do what works best for you. By the end of this, although I was left with fewer notes, they were much higher quality. It may feel weird at first leaving stuff out, but don't worry. Those gaps will get picked up later. This is a much more efficient use of study time. You'll find that you learn and retain a lot more than if you noted down every single fact. But your learning shouldn't just be limited to notes. A great way to gain a deeper practical understanding is to also do the labs associated with the course. Now, I'm not saying you need to do all of the labs for every service to pass the exam, but I would recommend playing around with services that you find difficult to understand. Not only does this help you learn about it, these practical skills are really useful for careers. But learning the content isn't enough to pass the exam. What's even more important is remembering it. Step two, remember it. Back when I was studying for exams in school, I'd sit there surrounded by mountains of textbooks and notes, trying to cram every last bit of information into my brain. My study system at the time consisted of rereading, highlighting, watching videos, and just hoping it would all stick. The results weren't great. It was only later after I learned about the power of active recall when my results started to improve a lot. You might have heard about this already from other YouTubers. But I want to show you how I apply this specifically for AWS exams. But for those of you who may not know about Active Recall, it's like a superpower for your brain when you're studying. The cool thing is that research shows it's one of the best ways to make sure what you learn sticks in your head. When you're trying to remember something you've learned, instead of rereading your notes, ask yourself questions about it. It's like playing a quiz game with yourself. Studies suggest that when you pull information out of your brain on your own, 
It strengthens your memory and makes it easier to remember later. But how do you actually put this into practice with AWS? I'm a big fan of Anki. Anki is a smart flashcard app that knows just when you need to be tested on a certain topic. For example, if you know a lot about the AWS Lambda service, then it'll recommend revisiting this topic less frequently. Whereas if you're struggling to learn about step functions, it'll start quizzing you on this more often. AWS exams, with the exception of the specialty ones, are generally quite broad and cover a lot of different services. So I really think Anki is perfect for this. It solves the question of what should I study and when, kind of like a personalized study coach. When making Anki cards, use the notes you previously made and turn them into question answer pairs on your flashcards. Keep them clear and to the point. So your brain gets a good workout every time you flip a card. Remember, struggling with the information is a good sign that you're learning. Let's take a look at some of the cards I made when I studied for the developer associate exam. As you can see, my cards aren't particularly explained in much detail and they don't look very pretty. The questions and answers are written in my own words and contain enough detail for me to review it later if I don't know the answer. Sometimes my cards would be on broader ideas, but other times it may just be on a fact or figure that I have to remember for the exam. And don't worry for now if you haven't made notes on these facts or figures. The goal is to have a deck of cards that broadly cover the main topics of the exam, then go through them on a regular basis. The finer details like the facts and figures will pick up in the last step, step three. Practice it. Practicing for exams is like training for a big race. Knowing the track or the content is crucial, but running or practice makes all the difference. When I was studying for the AWS Cloud Practitioner, I went through a Udemy course and felt pretty good afterwards. Then my company gave us access to an A Cloud Guru subscription, and I went through their course to plug any gaps in my knowledge. When I took a practice test, I remember feeling very confident. After all, I'd gone through two courses, but I got a reality check and realized two very important things. Number one, there were definitely still gaps in my knowledge. Sometimes this would be in areas where maybe I wasn't as strong as I thought I was. Other times it was just not knowing the certain facts and figures that you have to memorize. But failing that practice test was actually a blessing in disguise. It showed me exactly where I needed to focus. For every mistake I came across, I went through the same process. I reviewed the topic, I made sure I understood it, and I made an Anki card ready to be reviewed. Number two, exam technique is very important. Unlike school tests that might start easy and get harder, AWS throws questions at you in a random mix. Your first question could be the toughest one you'll see. This is why time management is key. Don't just split your total time evenly by the number of questions. Some will need a quick glance, others will need a deeper dive. Here's my strategy. I go through picking off the easy wins first. If a question seems doable in say 15 seconds, I answer it and move on. If not, I mark it for review later. This way, if I run out of time, it's the difficult questions that get left behind not the easy, low-hanging fruit. But where should you actually get these practice tests? For all my exams, I've bought tests from Tutorial Dojo. Now, they're generally a bit more difficult than the real thing. If possible, try and take these full practice exams in the same conditions as the real test. A good benchmark is if you're consistently getting above 80%, then you're probably ready for a real thing. But understanding this study system isn't the only thing you should do. There are simple non-revision related hacks you can do to improve your results. Firstly, connect with other students. When you're in school, you're put in a class and everyone is doing the same exam. It's easy to talk talk to others and bounce ideas of each other. But maybe like me, you don't know anyone else that is doing an AWS exam. Well, I'd recommend getting involved in the AWS certification subreddit community. Usually you can find other students there doing the same exam as you and share tips. It's also frequently visited by lots of AWS instructors who help answer questions. Exercise between your study session breaks. Now, this may sound weird, but I swear this has done wonders for my focus. Whenever I'm taking a break from studying, I like to go on a quick run on a treadmill or put on a workout video. After this, it's like I'm a new person and my energy levels have been restored. If you're ever feeling a bit unmotivated and tired during a study session, try this. Have a dedicated study area. I found that I was much more productive when I went to study in a local coffee shop. Having that dedicated space meant that when I walked in, my brain was kicked into AWS study mode. I found that my focus improved a lot. Also, I just think it's generally a bit more enjoyable to study outside your home. Now, you're probably interested in getting certifications to become a professional cloud engineer, right? If so, you'll want to check out this video where I outline my regrets and what I wish I knew when I started out as a cloud engineer.